So what do we have here? Um, one of my favorite things with the Time Safari is changing the direction of the sampled part. When I say sample, it's because of a di digital delay, and what all digital delays do is basically sample the uh, information coming in, and then you can play it back at a later time. Nice thing about this is if you stop recording it, which is the red LED, this record LED, you can actually keep that part in the buffer and abuse that signal. But um, we're going to go through a few things here. And let's get right into the direction aspect of it. If you flip this switch, which can happen on voltage control, you'll see there are jacks for record, play, looping, uh, loop start, and end, uh, control voltages for practically everything on here except feedback and uh, your mix level. So uh, what you can do is actually have this flipped just by sending a gate into it. It doesn't even have to be a gate, it can be an LFO, it can be almost anything. As long as this uh, level crosses the threshold, it'll flip. And the cool thing about these is, if you leave them in the, there's no reason to pull the, the cable out. If you just throw them up in the up position, it'll flip it either you know forward or backwards, depending upon what it is. But then it'll cease to keep flipping it on control voltage, which is really cool. So um, performance-wise, you can just flip it up there, and you know where it's going to be. And then when you bring it back down, it's back under control uh, voltage control. So. We have no loop going on. If I throw the loop on, you can obviously hear that. So let's play with uh, control voltage of the time. So if I put this attenuator down, which is great as well, an attenuator on this input, it's fantastic. I can just manually turn it. You can hear some aliasing. You hear loss of uh, high end. Now let's throw some control voltage in there. It's just an LFO, a triangle wave. That's why it's going lower and faster. Faster, lower. All right, so let's get rid of that. Speeds back up. Now we'll have the uh, direction switched on and off. You do have to play with the timing of when that gate's going to trigger in order to make it sound like that, but I won't explain how I'm doing that. It's part of the triple event timer, but it's complicated. Or you can just do it under complete manual control. So let's pull this out. It's no longer flipping the direction. But I can do it with my hand. So it'll continually flip it. So let's turn off the recording. We're only listening to the wet whatever's been sampled. And go back into recording some stuff. So, as you can see, just using the same gate, I can turn recording on and off. Recording doesn't happen unless play is going. So you have to have play going to get anything happening out of here in terms of delay. Which means you could do this. Let's play with the loop points. Go back to doing our dirty flanger idea. A little more feedback. Positive feedback. Negative feedback. It's just a polarity reversal on the feedback. Tighter loop. are getting about equal. And let's bring it back to something somewhat normal. with a 
ton of feedback. So let's just briefly listen to all the uh, Sound of Thunder expanders. It basically circuit bends the device, and I can't even tell you what they're connected to. And Harvest Man Scott doesn't tell us either, so you just have to experiment. Some of them are rather violent, some are pretty mellow. Add some noise, don't know if you can hear that on the camera's crappy mic. These two are, are my faves for making guitar distorted fuzz sound. Turn this up. I love that one. Isn't that great when you turn that off? So let's just listen to only the wet sound. Now, some dry sound back in. So if you have a compressor on the end of this, <laughs> feel free to experiment. <laughs> None of them get too loud though, none of them are horrible, but they do jump in volume, some of them. Well that'll be it, kids. And remember, 